This lecture is going to cover the normal distribution. Now the normal distribution is a special type of bell-shaped distribution. Not every bell-shaped distribution is normal. It's a special type of bell-shaped distribution. And it turns out that a lot of natural phenomena follow this distribution. This distribution will probably be our most important distribution throughout this class. And we'll see over the next week or two why that is. Why everything is so heavily focused towards a normal distribution. But for right now, let's learn a little bit about it. The normal distribution is quantitative and continuous. And specifically, it ranges from negative infinity to positive infinity and can take on any single value between those two values. The area under this curve equals 1 or 100%. It's symmetric over the mean. And most importantly, what we'll find is we can figure out any probability or percentage associated with this distribution by just knowing the mean and standard deviation. Those two values will be able to uncover any percent probability that we're interested in associated with a data set that's normally distributed. Now let's learn about when we should use this normal distribution. So if we have a continuous data set that follows a normal or approximate normal distribution, well, we'd be ready to rock and roll. That's because if you remember the concept, the more observations we have, the more bins we have, and the smaller bin widths we have as well. So the more and more observations we have, the closer and closer your distribution will become to a smooth curve. If, however, we do not have a continuous data set, if we have a discrete data set that has many possible outcomes and roughly follows this normal distribution shape, then we can use this continuous distribution to approximate it. So we'll find that we'll be using continuous distributions, a continuous normal distribution, to approximate some discrete variables. However, if your discrete variable only has a couple of outcomes, and follows a general bell shape, that does not mean we should use a normal distribution to approximate those probabilities and percentages. I think kind of these concepts will help a little bit if we look at them visually. So here we have two situations that both generally follow that quote unquote normal trend, that normal shape. However, if we look at the left graph, we'll notice that this general bell shaped does not really fit that histogram. That's because there are not a lot of outcomes in that set of data. That set of data was looking at grades and it was rounded to the nearest whole number. And so we can see if you have a discrete variable with not that many outcomes, that continuous smooth line, that normal distribution isn't doing a good job of representing your data. It's not going to do a good job of representing probabilities and percentages associated with it. However, if we look at the histogram to the right, this is a discrete variable that has many outcomes. And we can see the more outcomes we have, those smaller bins we have, and the more your distribution follows that smooth curve, which represents a normal distribution. So if you have discrete data, with a lot of outcomes, and it follows this normal trend, we can use this normal distribution, this continuous distribution, to approximate probabilities and percentages. Now the question we need to ask ourselves is, well, okay, how are we going to approximate probabilities and percentages? Well, we can do that by knowing the mean and standard deviation of your data set. When having normally distributed data, there's something that's called the empirical rule that can be used, which gives you a rough approximation of your data set. So what we have in this distribution or, or this kind of slide is if you go a certain amount of standard deviations away from your mean in each direction, 
if your data follows an approximate or a normal distribution, a certain percentage of observations will fall between there. So roughly or approximately 68% of observa observations fall within one standard deviation from your mean. If you go two standard deviations away from your mean, roughly 95% of observations fall within there. And if you go three standard deviations away from your mean, approximately 99.7% of observations fall within three standard deviations from your mean. Now this only holds true again for approximately normal or normally distributed data. If you don't have normally distributed data or approximately normally distributed data, these probabilities and percentages will not hold. Let's look at a little example to, to see what we mean by this. This example is going to represent how to use the empirical rules to estimate percentages using the variable IQ scores. Now, you've probably taken the IQ test at some point in your life. You probably don't remember the score, but, but roughly what it is, it's, it's some metric used to estimate someone's intelligence. And there's a bunch of different types of intelligences. The IQ is used to design or designed rather to estimate essentially critical thinking along with some other things. Now, IQ scores can only take on positive integers and they typically range between one to 200. Now you can't get an IQ score less than one, but you technically can get one that's larger than 200. However, this variable is still discrete because it takes on a countable amount of outcomes. On top of this, IQ scores are designed to follow an approximate normal distribution. So how they give out scores is based on how you did compared to others. And their score system, their scoring distribution is based on an approximate normal distribution. The mean of this distribution is a hundred and the standard deviation is 15. This is how they give out these scores with a mean of roughly a hundred and a standard deviation of 15. Now IQ scores are technically discrete, right? So I'll just write a line to plot a mean. And what that means, maybe I'll make the value 100 here. And what that means, since it's discrete, is each value has its own little histogram, or excuse me, its own little bin. So if we were to do this out, maybe each person or each bin represents a specific score, there would be a bunch of bins. Right? Now, since it's discrete, it's never going to perfectly follow a smooth line. Right? However, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the normal distribution to approximate those probabilities and percentages. Rather than calculate the percent of people who score higher than uh, uh, or who score 100 or larger, we would have to figure out the probability of people scoring 100 plus the probability of people scoring 101 plus the probability probability of people scoring 102, and so on and so forth, we would have to add up all those little bins to get certain probabilities. Instead, we can use this normal distribution to approximate these things. So I'm going to represent the normal distribution as a continuous line, a smooth curve, and we're going to use this to estimate all those probabilities and percentages. So let's kind of start with our first empirical rule. What this says is if we go one standard deviation in each direction, that would bring us to the values of 115 and 85. And if we kind of place those little markers there, let me draw that perfect. What this says is 68% approximately 68%, I'll get a little approximately, 68% of observations score between that range, score between an 85 and 115. If we go two standard deviations in each direction, what that is saying 
is roughly 95% of observations will get between a 130 and 70. So again, we want two standard deviations in each direction. Again, that's approximately 95%. And if we go three standard deviations in each direction, one more, that brings us to the value of 145 and 55, and roughly 99.7%, approximately 99.7% of observations fall within three standard deviations between the scores 55 and 145. If we wanted to go a step kind of further, even another standard deviation each way, we get 40 and 160. And what this is saying is approximately 100% of observations will be between those values. So we can kind of use these kind of four pieces of information. There's three real pieces, one, two, and three, 68%, 95%, and 99.7. Those are our approximations. If we go beyond that, four standard deviations are beyond, we can say about everybody. Is it the case? No. Some people have IQ scores above 160 and less than 40. But if we're just making approximations, we can kind of say about everybody or about 68 or about 95 or about 99.7. And the reason we can do this is because we knew the distribution was approximately normal. We knew the population mean is 100 and the population standard deviation is 15. We had these pieces of information. If we didn't know these pieces of information, we could not use these empirical rules. So this example should help you kind of see how this empirical rule can be applied to actual situations.